February 9, 2011, The Guardian published an article titled Nokia Boss's Burning Platform Memo Revealed. The article disclosed a haunting internal memo from CEO Stephen Ellop where he compared Nokia to a man standing on a burning oil platform in the middle of the ocean, forced to jump or face burning to death. That wasn't just an ordinary memo. It was the first public admission of a truth the world was beginning to sense, Nokia was collapsing. Just a few years earlier, Nokia was the ultimate symbol of the phone industry. In 2007, they held a commanding 49.4% of the global market share. But then the storm named iPhone and Android swept through. Market share plummeted uncontrollably. Outdated technology, slow responses, and strategic missteps turned the giant into an outsider in the very game it had created. Within just six years, the empire that once dominated the tech world had lost almost everything. And now, more than a decade later, the blockchain world is witnessing a moment very similar to that Nokia moment this time with Ethereum. Ethereum used to be the center of all innovation. It was here that smart contracts were realized, nurturing the creation of the 2020 DeFi summer, leading up to the Enft and Gamefi fever of 2021. But in the current cycle, as Bitcoin hits new highs, Solana surges, and emerging ecosystems capture global attention, Ethereum remains silent. Ethereum is still there still the biggest name when it comes to smart contracts, still possessing a vast ecosystem and one of the most robust and sustainable infrastructures. But something seems to be slipping away. Not a collapse, but a quiet withdrawal from the market's consciousness. The price of ETH stagnates. Users are dwindling. The narrative is fading, and the leading voice seems to no longer resonate as it once did. Is this just a step back to prepare for a strong comeback, or a sign that an era is closing? Today's video from Pi From Us will clearly analyze the signs of ETH's decline, as well as the rise of alternative platforms. Clearly, Pi Network is the emerging name attracting the most users and developers currently. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel to understand more about finance and economics surrounding the cryptocurrency world. I Ethereum, from a glorious era to a moment of pause for reflection in 2021. Ethereum wasn't just the center of everything in the crypto world, it was the entire stage. From DeFi to ENVs, from DAOs to GAMEFI, every major wave started on Ethereum. Legendary protocols like Uniswap, Curve, Aave, MacerDAO, Yearn, Opencia, or Axie Infinity all chose Ethereum as their launchpad. That explosion wasn't just a feeling, it was clearly reflected in the numbers. Total value locked Tivil on Ethereum peaked at over $153 billion USD by the end of 2021, accounting for more than 60% of the entire global DeFi market Tivil. Daily transactions ranged from 1 to 1.2 million, despite sky-high gas FEs averaging $20 to $50, sometimes exceeding $100. Yet the network was constantly congested, because there were too many users. The number of daily active addresses also reflected the unprecedented heat, 400,000 to 500,000 addresses were regularly active, creating the sense that Ethereum was where everything was happening. The average ETH price at that time was around $3,700 USD, with a market capitalization reaching for $140 billion USD bringing Ethereum very close to the dream of dethroning Bitcoin. Frankly, at that time, to do anything significant in crypto, one had to enter the land of Ethereum. But stepping into 2025, that picture has changed significantly. Ethereum hasn't collapsed, but it seems to have become unusually quiet. The total ecosystem Tivil is now only around $50 billion USD, down nearly 65% from the 2021 peak. This decline is partly due to the market correction but largely due to the dispersion of liquidity to new ecosystems like Solana, Arbitrum, Sui, Ton, places with low costs, friendly UX, and crucially, better storytelling. The number of daily active addresses has decreased, reflecting a large number of users who have left or moved to layer to seconds. The price of ETH has also dropped by nearly 50%, hovering around the $1,850 mark with the market cap falling to about $220 billion USD. Worse still, the current gas fee has significantly decreased to around $0.2, making the experience better, 
but also indirectly reflecting a truth Ethereum is becoming less crowded. All indicators show that Ethereum is no longer the market's focus. While Bitcoin has broken its previous peak thanks to ETFs and institutional capital flow, and Solana or Base have emerged thanks to the wave of memo coins and new builders, Ethereum remains stuck in its old price range, with no clear breakthrough. This raises a big question, is the market pricing ETH fairly, or is something deeper changing within the ecosystem? Ironically, the strong development of Layer 2S once seen as a strategic step to help Ethereum scale is now causing ETH to gradually withdraw from the center of the user experience. Layer 2S like Arbitrum, Optimism, Base have truly succeeded, fast speeds, cheap FEs, good experience. Layer 2S help Ethereum scale, but they don't help ETH accumulate value as effectively as Layer 1 once did. Instead of funneling capital towards ETH, Layer 2S are dividing it up and ETH, while still technically important, is no longer present in daily user behavior. Staking was once a great hope for Ethereum after the merge, but after some time of implementation, the current ETH staking yield is only about to 0.8% even lower than us government bonds. When crypto risk remains high, but the yield is unattractive, ETH is no longer a prioritized asset to hold for stable returns. And without yield, faith in long-term growth is also being shaken by strong competition from other blockchains. If in 2021, Ethereum was where everything started where everyone looked to predict the future this year, the spotlight belongs to other names. Solana is creating its own cultural wave with memo coins, a young builder community, and continuous media campaigns. Ton leverage is the user power of Telegram to directly inject millions of new users into Web3 wallets. And Pi Network is the emerging name with a large loyal user base and the goal of truly becoming a decentralized common currency. And Ethereum, still updating IPES, testnets, talking about proto dank sharding. In a market where emotions, stories, and experiences attract capital flow, Ethereum appears to mature. And then, when piecing all these fragments together stagnant price, dispersed capital, weak media presence, unattractive staking one starts to see the shadow of another major brand from the past Nokia. No crash, no hack, no scandal. But every indicator, every chart, every discussion beat is quieting down. Ethereum isn't weak, but it's slowing down in a world that never stops accelerating. And like Nokia once was, perhaps the scariest thing isn't being replaced, but being quietly forgotten while still existing, EI. Why has Ethereum fallen into this state? Ethereum isn't slowing down due to a lack of technology, nor has it lost its position due to weakness. In fact, purely from a technical standpoint, the Ethereum ecosystem today is perhaps even stronger than during its peak in 2021. The successful merge upgrade transitioned Ethereum to a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism a major step forward for the environment and scalability. Subsequent upgrades like Kankin Deneb Denkin and the upcoming Pectra are clearly improving network performance. Layer 2S are developing strongly, developer tools are more user-friendly than ever, and Ethereum security standards remain exemplary in the industry. But that is precisely the problem. 1. Ethereum is too stable to still generate excitement while newer systems like Solana or Ton can launch major campaigns after just a few days of discussion, and Pi Network is constantly seeing large developers and companies like Article 19 and Banksa join its network. Ethereum needs time, consensus, security checks, and a clear roadmap. That's a technical strength, but a weakness in a market where speed stability always creates better FOMO. This makes Ethereum lose points in the eyes of new participants those who don't care about technology, but just want to know where's the action, where's the large community. 2. Layer to help scale, but at the cost of value fragmentation it's undeniable that scaling via Layer 2 was one of the most correct strategies Ethereum ever pursued. At the peak in 2021, Layer 1 gas FEs were a nightmare for the community. A simple swap transaction could cost tens of dollars, and nf minting races sometimes consumed hundreds of USD. Maintaining user experience on Layer 1 was unfeasible. And the emergence of Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, brought a breath of fresh air, fast speeds, cheap FEs, friendly UX, without reducing Ethereum's native security. However, solving the fee problem opened up a new, unexpected issue, value fragmentation. As Layer 2S become almost independent ecosystems, capital flow and liquidity also get detached from Layer 1. Instead of pouring into ETH as before, users now operate with stablecoins, 
project tokens, or the native tokens of the layer to S like OP, or ARP. ETH wants the central asset of all activity now only plays a technical role, and can even be replaced at the experience level. The consequence is that although the Ethereum ecosystem expands in user scale and transaction volume thanks to layer to S, the actual value accumulating in the ETH token doesn't increase proportionally. Overall TIVL may rise, and so may the user count, but ETH is no longer the default asset for activities, isn't used for rewards, and is no longer the core narrative within the community. Compared to 2021, when ETH was the mandatory centerpiece of every action from farming, swapping, to minting ENTS its role has now been significantly diluted. It doesn't stop there, the layer to S themselves are creating a chaotic landscape and token inflation. From OP to ARB, then ZK, layer to platforms are racing to launch incentives, airdrops, and native tokens to attract users, builders, and liquidity. In the short term, this helps ecosystem growth, but in the long run, it pushes Ethereum into a complicated scenario many tokens, many sub-ecosystems, all competing for users, assets, and attention while the native token of the system, ETH, doesn't benefit proportionally. 3. Lack of a new narrative to inspire the Riam used to be the center of all the most compelling stories Defi was born from Ethereum. Ents were born from Ethereum, DAOs, Gamefi, Defi 2.0 it all started here. But currently, Ethereum lacks a narrative strong enough to trigger market sentiment. Bitcoin has the digital gold story. Solana has the ecosystem of speed and UX story. Tun has the crypto for the masses via Telegram story. Ethereum is still upgrading. Ethereum's upgrades, while important, are difficult to communicate in market language. It's hard to make a compelling Twitter thread solely about EIP for 8 for 4 or pro to dank sharding. And when it can't tell a good story, Ethereum loses the power to direct the flow of attention something more valuable than market cap. 4. Ethereum is still a great engineer, but doesn't know how to tell a story if anything about Ethereum has truly gone viral in the crypto community recently, it's probably. The memes about Vitalik. From the clip of him singing awkwardly on stage at Token 2 for 9, to his quirky outfits, peculiar gait, or the photo of him with wardrobe malfunction pants all have become familiar jokes on crypto Twitter. And sometimes, looking at those images, one has to chuckle and wonder, why did I bet my investment portfolio on a skinny guy with a style seemingly straight out of a 2005 forum? But that very image also reflects something deeper. Ethereum has never been good at telling a compelling story to the market. Despite leading technically, despite still being the most stable and decentralized infrastructure platform, Ethereum lacks a crucial element, the ability to convey inspiration. This market operates not just on technology, but also on stories and psychology. And on that front, Ethereum is being clearly overtaken. Solana is a prime example, this ecosystem isn't afraid to host large events, sponsor multi-million dollar hackathons, and even engage in things often deemed frivolous, like memocoins. But it's precisely these seemingly non-technical things that help Solana capture users' minds. Young people flock to Solana not because they learned Rust, but because they see opportunity, community connection, and feel the fun that Ethereum currently lacks. Similarly, although Pi Network supposedly only launched its open network on February 20th, 2025, global media and the user community constantly talk about it. Just a small move triggers news coverage worldwide, because the interest in Pi Network is immense, whether positive or negative. Meanwhile, Ethereum continues its silent steps, updating testnets, upgrading protocols, refining the roll-up-centric roadmap architecture. All are important, but they don't create market excitement. Returning to the point, the problem isn't that Ethereum has nothing to tell, but rather that the ecosystem doesn't seem to know how to tell a compelling story. Things like IP for 8 for 4, Pro to Dank Sharding, or Verkle Trees are fundamental advancements, but they lack the media weight of Solana Summer, Ton in Telegram, or is Pi Network a scam? And in a market where narrative drives capital flow, having no media voice is equivalent to being obscured from the game. This contrast leaves Ethereum, despite its depth, gradually fading on the surface where the market's mind is decided. It's a sad paradox the blockchain project with the most long-term thinking is gradually losing connection with the present moment. 3. Conclusion The empire isn't collapsing, but it could be forgotten Netherum still exists. No, more accurately, Ethereum is still building quietly but persistently. While new ecosystems constantly emerge, becoming the focus of market attention with waves of memo coins, 
viral campaigns, and multi-million dollar airdrops, Ethereum chooses to walk its own path in silence, updating testnets, preparing new IPES, expanding layer to S, optimizing data models. And perhaps, it is precisely this maturity that is the problem. Ethereum has never stopped moving forward, but when the rest of the world is chasing speed, emotion, and memes, Ethereum is no longer the story people want to tell. It's not wrong. It's just no longer appealing enough in a market where attention share is the most valuable asset. However, amidst the calls for an Ethereum Nokia moment, it's important to remember, not every empire collapses with a bang. Some empires fall in silence and some are merely retreating temporarily to return stronger when the time is right. With Vitalik returning to a more prominent leadership role, with infrastructure upgrades gradually being completed, and with layer to s beginning to integrate more tightly into the overall network, Ethereum might be entering a phase of quiet rebirth. But rebirth, to be meaningful, cannot be purely technical. Ethereum needs a new fire a reason for the community to look towards it with the same excitement as in 2017. Ethereum isn't dead, but if it doesn't learn to come alive again in users' minds it might still exist, like a legacy rather than a part of the future. The world always operates this way, the old will gradually be replaced by the new, and only those that are truly strong and continuously innovate and expand can survive long term. If you stand still or develop too slowly, you will immediately be overtaken by competitors. 